What's good, everybody? It's your boy, Ferris Madonna. Welcome again to LG Iron Reviews. On today's episode, I'll be reviewing The Iron Claw, a movie about the Von Erich family, the wrestling family uh, in the mid-'80s uh, that was deep in the heart of Texas, in Dallas, Texas. Shout out to the Sportatorium. Uh, it's one of wrestling's first-ever families. Um, a family marred by darkness, some say cursed, um, some say just extremely unlucky and a tragic story about them. Um, actually, what's funny about me reviewing this movie is I saw this movie um, as, a, as a screener. I was invited to one, threw me off. It was pretty dope. Um, I I enjoyed I enjoyed the screener, so shout out to, shout out to the homies for allowing me to uh, watch it that way. Um, but the movie is about a wrestling family. But the movie isn't about wrestling whatsoever. It literally is not a wrestling film, if you think about it. It's a family tragedy. It's um, a man's pursuit of greatness that he thought he was supposed to be given. And he wasn't giving it to him. So he thought he was slighted. Someone screwed him over in Fritz Von Erich, the, mat- the patriarch of the family. And that's because Fritz was a wrestler. Um, Fritz became the baddest man he thought of and back in the day when he was wrestling he was like what how do I be a bad guy which is a heel how do I be that he became a Nazi and he was like I'm gonna be the best heel they're gonna give me the title I'm gonna get the notor- notoriety of this of this thing and he never got it and he always felt some type of way about it and he then pushed his sons Kevin and David to be those wrestlers to do what he couldn't do he created a sp- a wrestling promotion in Dallas, um, world class, worldwide class wrestling, I believe. World class championship, world class championship wrestling, world class championship wrestling, the WCCW. That's what it was. I, my brain was a little mumbled, but that is. And then he basically built his sons. Those were the people. His sons were the men. Kevin was first. Kevin was. The second oldest, because he did have an older brother named Jack, who unfortunately passed away when he was six or seven. He was unfortunately electrocuted in an accident at their trailer park. And this is going to be a common occurrence in this family. Death marks this family. And the way Sean Durkin, who wrote and directed this movie, conveyed that, was phenomenal. It was tremendous. As the movie was going along, I just felt moved and touched by it. Kevin, who is technically the oldest out of the out of the out of the six Von Eric kids, because there is a sixth one. His name was Chris. They didn't. They don't really touch about. They don't really touch. Uh, a lot about him um, in the movie, but he also died as well. As the movie kept going along, Kevin is put in the spotlight, played by Zac Efron, and he's going to be the next man up. He's going to be the one. This guy's going to give me that belt. And then what happens is the NWA, who is the big wrestling promotion in the United States of America, who then give their titles to people they say, "Hey man, your kid Kevin is he? Does he got what? Does he does he have what he got? Fits? We're gonna send our champion down there. He's gonna wrestle him. This is one of the big moments of the movie. And Harley Race, their champion, played by I believe Kevin uh, Kevin Anton Kevin Anton. There's this moment where they're outside of the ring, and he suplexes Kevin, played by Zach, onto the concrete." And something happens to Kevin. He can't get up. He can't get up. I think he probably hurt his ribs, hurt his sternum. He just couldn't breathe. And that's when you felt that everything that Fritz worked for through Kevin is done. And you see the dis and then you see the disappointment in Fritz. And he makes it into the ring and he's trying to trying to rebound Kevin's trying to rebound and Fritz is kind of like oh my god please god don't let this be my dream cuz this isn't Kevin's dream this is his dad's dream Kevin's dream is just to be with his family it's a very constant 
theme in the movie. Family is what Kevin cares about. That's it. Family. His dream is to be with his family, to do anything with his brothers. Whatever his brothers are doing, he wants to do it with them. That was his dream. His dream was never to be a wrestler. If his brother said, let's go be carpenters, Kevin was going to be a carpenter. The movie is through Kevin's eyes because Kevin is the last is the last remaining Von Eric of that generation. Everyone else has passed away. Mom, dad, and his brothers. So Kevin is the lens of the film. And it is a just deeply sad lens. There's moments of, of light and brilliance in this film when he meets Lily James' character, his future wife, Pam. You can see the light in his eyes. Um, but after he completely screws up the Harley race match, which NWA was really looking at, like, is this kid the next one? His brother, David, the worker, which is a guy who's very good in the ring. He's not very athletic. He knows how to wrestle. He doesn't really use his athletic ability like that. So David gets on the mic after the match and cuts a promo on Harley Race, and it goes over like gangbusters. And that was the moment Kevin knew he was going to get passed over for the world title and it's on to David. But Kevin never held that against David. He didn't care. He didn't care because he loved his family. And that's what just grabbed my heart. Because I am David. No, no, no. I'm Kevin. I'm Kevin. I want my family to win. If I'm not the one providing the winning, I'm not, I don't care. We're going to win. And I'm not just even talking about family as in my brothers and sisters and mothers. But yeah, of course. But I'm not the people I call family. The friends over the years that I've called family. You know? I want them to win. I want to help them win. And that's what Kevin did. He helped them to win. He got passed over to David because David was a better on the mic. Clearly that Kevin wasn't good on the mic. And being good on the mic is key in pro wrestling. But he got passed over. David is learning to be a wrestler. He's, he's getting real good. And they start forming a tag team. Start forming a tag team. And Fritz, his mind is, is moving and grooving, right? Fritz is like, my dream. This is Fritz's dream. He wants one of his kids to be the man as the wrestler. Fritz is basically making little Fritzes. And that's where it's all wrong. You shouldn't do that. You should let your kids find out what they want in life. And it's specifically, it really comes to head with one of the kids. Kevin, they actually liked pro wrestling, but he would do anything with his brothers. Whatever his brothers wanted, they were going to wrestle. David liked wrestling. He liked wrestling. He wanted to wrestle, so he wrestled. But then with Carrie, the third, the fourth, the youngest technically, because their older brother Jack died, Kevin being the second, David being the third, and now Carrie being the fourth. Carrie actually in the, wasn't a wrestler. He was a shot putter. He was an Olympic shot putter. He was going to go to the Olympics in the 80, in 1980. But America boycotted those. So they sent all the Olympics away. So Carrie comes back. This is all in the film, man. You can see it. And, and, and it gets to the point where everything converges, where three of them, all three of them, you got Kevin, David, and Carrie, all three of them are in the ring winning titles. You know, I want to show you a photo, a juxtaposition of, see, here's the real Von Erichs in the black and white and the movie Von Erichs in the black and white. So you have Jer Jeremy Allen White as Carrie Von Erich, um, Harris Dickerson as David Von Erich, and you have Zach Efron as Kevin Von Erich. And same thing here. You have Carrie, Her um, David, and you have Kevin. And then Fritz is in the middle, and then there's Fritz in the middle with with Holt M McCullen. They're going to become wrestlers. Wrestling is key. They're, they want to wrestle. They have a little brother named Mike. Mike don't want to wrestle. Mike's a little brittle. Mike isn't built for wrestling. Like physically built for wrestling. He wants to be a rock star. He wants to be a rock star. He wants to make music. And then, and then 
it's a great, great line, great scene of them. Mike wants to play a gig at the university, I believe, in uh, University of Texas. So they got, they got to go to Austin. And mom and dad said no. But the brothers are mischievous and they don't listen. So then they sneak out with Pam. Pam being Kevin's girlfriend at the moment. Um, there's a great scene with Pam and Kevin at the local steakhouse. The local steakhouse. They're having their they're having their brisket. They're just talking about life and stuff. And Ke and Zach Efron says something to someone. It's like, I just want to be with my brothers. Whatever they're doing, I want to do. I want to do. My dream is to do anything with them. Because that's what I want. I want to be with them. Mike wants to be a rock star, so they sneak Mike to the performance, and he performs, and he and he rocks it. Carrie's happy, David's happy, Kevin's happy, and everything is, everything looks great. You have the three wrestlers, then you have the future rock star. You know? And then you keep going through the movie, you get to Pam and Kevin are at their wedding. Pam and Kevin are at their wedding. And this is when tragedy strikes. This is when the pain strikes in real life. So in real life, David Von Erich is being tabbed to be the next NWA world champion. Like I said, Kevin got passed over. So David is going to become the next guy. The NWA is like, we like David Von Erich, but we need David to go worldwide. We need him to work some matches in Japan because back in the day, you got to be worldwide. Japan needs to know your name back in the day. There's a scene at Kevin's wedding when David's in the bathroom and he's throwing up blood. Just throwing up blood. He's just throwing it up. And he's just up chucking and just his just, just guts and all his jazz. Um, but then something happened to his intestine. Something happened to his intestine. David goes to Japan and he does some wrestling matches in real life and then you he dies in his hotel room. You know? And it was just sad. He ruptures his intestine resulting from acute and enteritis i think um there was some fishiness about some wrestlers thought he was doing drugs and painkillers but the autopsy report says no it's he is his intestine his intestine ruptured and if you know about organs i think the only organ you can't replace is your intestine so his intestine ruptured in his hotel room, probably filled his intestine with blood, and then he dies. In the movie, you don't see it. In the movie, you don't see it. In the movie, you go from Kevin finding his brother barfing in the bathroom blood, them shaking hands, loving each other, kissing each other, and then you cut to Kevin driving back, driving back home to the home house to, to meet up with Fritz. He walks in, House was quiet. Fritz is sitting at a table, played by Holt. McCall I think that's his name. And he tells he tell, he tells Kevin, your, bro your brother David's dead. Just like that. Because in real life, that's how they found out. Someone calls them in Japan saying, David's dead, and boom, that's it. That's it. Gone. Then it's the first funeral, the first mark of death. Then we keep, then we fast forward. The Von Eriks, they need a champion. 
And NWA wants to put a, a title on one of them. And Kevin gets spared, if you think about it, because there's a scene where after the funeral, Fritz literally just buried his son. He just buried his son. But he's like, we have business to attend to. The NWA wants one of us to become champion. They want you or Kevin to become champion. And Carrie's at the moment. Carrie's there. Carrie said, I want the title. Kevin says, I want the title. And Fritz says, we'll flip a coin. And that's the moment where I'm like, so Kevin Von Erich's the only last remaining kid of that second generation. Does that coin flip save Kevin Von Erich? Because the coin flip goes Carrie's way. Carrie gets this title. They they have this big, grandiose event of him winning the title in Dallas, I believe, at the Cotton Bowl, I think. And everyone's cheering for the name. The Von Erichs are like, everyone knew their name. They're mega stars. They Carrie wins the belt. Everything is amazing. They get to they they fast forward. Carrie's a little drunk. He's talking to Kevin. They're having fun. They're a little sad because David's not here to see it. And then Carrie's like, all right, I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I'm going to hop on my bike and he go. Now, mind you, Carrie's been drinking. He's a little, little lucid. And then he, he's driving. And he's on the motorcycle. And he's going fast on the freeway. And then boom, black. And then they cut to Carrie the next morning. Or I think they fast forwarded a couple months probably. Carrie's getting out of the bed in crutches. So you're like, oh my God, he he was in a he was in a motorcycle accident. That's that's horrible. And you only see the upper top of his body. And he's in crutches and he's in crutches. And then he gets to the he gets to the the fridge. And this is why I think Sean Durkin was phenomenal in his reveal. So there was a there was a story at that moment after Carrie won the NWA title that he lost his leg. He lost his foot in a motorcycle accident. Fritz Von Erich and the Von Erich said that never happened. And they tried to keep that lie going. That never happened. But then it was quickly found out he did. And the way they reveal that Kerry Von Erich lost one of his feet was jarring. It was a little juxtaposed. It threw me off a little. I knew it, I knew it happened. Because I, I know the story... Before the movie, I knew what happened. I was like, how are they going to show me that Kerry lost his foot? And Sean Durkin, phenomenal. The emotion it's conveying of this movie, and, you, and you're seeing just the sadness of it. So Kerry has one foot. Kevin has been relegated to sing tag team competition with his brother, Mike. And this is the key right here. Mike wanted to be a rock star. Mike wanted to be a rock star. He didn't want to wrestle. He said, I don't like wrestling. And I personally think, but Fritz pushed him and he pushed him and he pushed him. He's like, you're going to be a wrestler. That's what we do. We're wrestlers. We wrestle. We wrestle. Mike didn't want to wrestle. It just, you forcing your kid to do something he doesn't want to be. That's a, a lot of that happened back in the day. A lot of that happens now. You're going to do what I tell you to do. You're going to be what I want you to be. I don't care what you want. You know? This movie showed the complex relationships of fathers and sons. David wanted to be a wrestler. Kevin just wanted to be with his brothers. Kerry was trying to go to the Olympics, but he had to fall, on, fall back to wrestling. Mike wanted to be a rock star. But they were all shoveled into the wrestling Funnel by Fritz. So David's dead. Mike is now taking, basically took David's spot. It's Carrie, Mike, and Kevin. And they're wrestling in tag teams and um, six-man tag matches. And Mike's learning. He's learning. It's it's a little rough on his body. He's He's fragile. He's brittle. You know? N not everyone's body is built the same. He couldn't, he couldn't get buff like his brothers. Like, like I said, look at this. You see this photo and look at the real Von Erichs in the, in the black and the white. 
They're jacked. They're jacked. They're jacked. Mike never got that jacked. And then tragedy strikes Mike. They're in, they're wrestling in Israel, I believe. Oh, well, Israel. And he dislocates his shoulder. Bad. He like dislocates his shoulder. He went to the hospital, but then was, but then he developed a fever of 107. He was diagnosed with something called toxic shock syndrome, which gave him some brain damage. And then he lost a, a lot of weight. Um, he, and it just goes downhill for Mike. It just go down. It just goes downhill after that. They didn't show this in the movie, but he also did suffer some head injuries from a car accident. But it just kept getting worse because they wanted him to replace David. They didn't want him to be Mike Von Erich. They wanted to be him David Von Erich. He's like, but I'm not David. And another source of family strife, wanting one person to be another person, basically trying to replace the void. Fritz didn't. Fritz didn't love Mike for being Mike. He didn't, he didn't want Mike to be Mike. Mike wanted to be a rock star. He wanted to play music. Fritz didn't care about that. He's like, you're going to be David. And the pressure of him trying to be David, who was going to be their next superstar. He's like, I don't want to be a wrestler. I don't want to be David. So like, you got to be David. Be David. It got to Mike. Hurt shoulder. Toxic shock, toxic shock syndrome. Brain damage. Speech was a little slurred. They did a, I didn't know this, but they were so famous that when Mike got out of a coma, everyone found out he was in a coma, but when he got out of the coma, they were so famous, they had to do a press conference at the hospital where people had to find out, like, is Mike okay? That's how famous they were in the 80s in Texas. People wanted to know what was going on with Mike. So Mike was there with Kevin in the press conference, which was Zac Efron and Stanley Simmons, who plays Mike Von Erich in the movie. And they're doing this press conference. I didn't know this. Now imagine you just had the worst moment of your life. And you're at a press conference explaining to everyone, like, in your speech a little slurry, you've lost a bit about you've lost a bit of yourself. Now, the, now you have to go in front of the cameras and tell everyone, thank you for being, thank you for caring about me, but I don't feel good about myself. And my dad's not really helping me out because my dad never wanted to be, my, never wanted me to be myself. He wanted me to be my brother who he lost. And then that leads Kevin, Mike, it leads Mike, one of the most gut-wrenching scenes in this movie. He's writing his suicide note. He writes it. It's the night before. He gets a sleeping bag. And he's walking to the a, a lake nearby their house. He overdoses on painkillers and, and, and drinks. And he dies near the lake. And Sean Durkin pans out the camera and people found out find out the, the suicide note and they're looking for him and they're looking for him like they're all spread out you can see all of them spread out and they find him and it's just gut wrenching because Mike with the brain damage he, you know he, he can't walk right you know he's a little he's he's a little bit slow in his speech and his his pronunciations and it just, it's just horrifying to watch because he didn't want to wrestle. He didn't want to wrestle. He was forced to wrestle by his father. His death was preventable. That's the biggest storyline of this movie. The tragedy that happened was preventable. 
It was preventable. Harry didn't have to go on the motorcycle. Fritz didn't have to force Mike to wrestle. David should have went to the hospital when he was throwing up blood. But they couldn't. Because they needed to wrestle to make Fritz happy. They needed to live up to the name. Kevin Von Erich, Zach Efron, the beginning of the movie, talks about how one of his ancestors said that this family's cursed. And how darkness follows. And him and Pam have a child together after they after they got married. After Mike after Mike's funeral, two things happen. So they so he makes sure his children have his wife's name because he's like I'm not giving them my name it's cursed. And then after Mike's funeral, I believe he doesn't go home. He tells Pam Lily James's character to take the kids and go home. And he says I can't be near you. All I do is bring death. That's all I do. And you're watching this heartbreaking scene of him telling his wife and his two beautiful kids, I can't be near you because I'm scared I'm going to kill you. I'm scared that my existence, my name, my being near you is going to lead us to die. He's, I don't deserve happiness. He doesn't think he deserves happiness. He believes in the curses. And I'm going to be real with you. Modern day people people believe in curses. I, I kind of believe in curses. Because how do you explain two of your sons dying in a span of three years? Dies in 84, David Von Erich. Mike dies in 87. And then the kid they don't talk about in the movie, Chris, dies in 91. Chris Von Erich, who no, they don't talk about in the movie, um, he shot himself in the head. And it was just bad. It's just pain and suffering for this family. Sometimes I don't have words when I talk about this movie or when I talk about this story because when I came out of the theater for this movie, I, I called my brothers right away because I go back to Kevin Ma and Eric. I just want to be with my brothers. I just want to be with my brothers. There's a frantic scene by Jeremy Allen White who plays Carrie Von Eric, where he, he's calling his brother Kevin and he's freaking out and he's flipping out. And he calls his dad. He says, Dad, Carrie's freaking out, man. You got to Gotta go check on him. Check on him. He's you need to check on him. And the next day, Carrie shoots himself near the tree near the house. Kevin drove to the house and said, Hey, where's where's Carrie? And him and his dad are arguing and the gun that Carrie bought his dad for Christmas is missing. And they hear a gunshot. Boom. They hear a gunshot. They hear a gunshot, yo.
outside. And they run outside and they see Carrie just lying there near the tree. And they run. And Carrie, Carrie shot himself. Carrie shot himself. And then, this is the moment where Kevin lost it. And he attacks his dad. Says, you were supposed to protect them. It's your job to protect them. It was your job to protect us. You didn't protect us. Fritz von Erich was so hell-bent on being the man he thought he should have been because NWA slighted him. That he forced his kids into madness. His family was forced to deal with death and destruction. The coin flip saves Kevin Von Erich. Pushing David. David had to wrestle all the time. He had to wrestle in Missouri, Texas. He had to fly to Japan. He, there was no breaks. He was throwing up blood in the bathroom of his brother's wedding. And no one said go to the hospital. No one said it because you had to keep wrestling, man. The show got to go on because if you don't wrestle and you take some breaks off, they'll move on from you. Forcing Mike to wrestle when he didn't want to wrestle. You got to be David. Imagine you lose your brothers in 84, 87, Three years. Then four years later, you lose another brother. And then two years after that, you lose another brother. Nine years. Nine years. You're Kevin Von Erich. You lose four of your brothers in nine years. Kevin and Pam always said they want a ranch with a big family. And they got that. They got a ranch and a big family in Hawaii. But there's a scene where he's watching his 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 uh, his children play play throwing the ball left and right. And he says, Kevin says, Zach Efron says, his sons are brothers. And he just says, you know what? The greatest thing in the world is to be a brother. I used to be a brother. Because when Carrie dies in the movie, they go to like this heaven, I guess. He meets Mike and David. And he meets their older brother, Jack. This movie is just gut-wrenching. It's not about wrestling. It's about family. It's about pain, loss, dealing with it. Kevin Von Erich, he loses his older brother, who he knew for two years. He loses his four younger brothers. And in nine years, he loses his dad in 97. He loses his mom. There's a scene with his mom played by Moira Tierney where she's crying her eyes out, looking at this black dress where she's like, everyone's going to recognize this dress. Everyone's going to, I need a new dress. I need, and she just loses it. And Pam, played by Lily James, says, it doesn't matter about the dress. The dress doesn't matter. And she's crying in Lily James's arm. Because the reason they would recognize that black dress is that there have been so many funerals. Imagine losing four, no, 
five of your six kids. A parent's worst nightmare. I've been told is outliving your child. You're not supposed to outlive your child. Now imagine her outliving five of her six. What must she be dealing with? And Sean Durkin just drops these scenes in these movies that fit perfectly, that just encapsulate everything of a, of a person. When Kevin attacks his dad and he cusses him out, you, he cuts the hole and holds Fitz Von Eric is distraught. The scene with the mom in the black dress, Kevin just, Kevin throughout the entire movie, the pain he must have been suffering. It was amazing. It was an amazing film. Sean Durkin hit it out of the park. I believe I tweeted out something. I'm going to read you one of my tweets. Um, let me bring it up real quick. Because I, when I watched the movie, I tweeted out something. I didn't review it. I just tweeted it out. Quick little, uh, a quick little thing. I said, I believe, let me see. Someone, someone lately liked it about this movie. Trying to, trying to find it, y'all. I got you one moment. Right here. Saw a screening of The Iron Claw today. Good golly almighty. What a tremendous film. Being a wrestling fan, I am extremely familiar with the Von Erich story and the way Sean Durkin told it was gripping. It made me call my brothers and tell them I love them because that's what this movie did. I called my brother and I told him I loved him. Both of them. I tried to do it all three of them, but the third one, I don't know how to get in contact with them because sometimes they get in trouble and they take away of his, take away of his phone. It is. I do, I do have a gripe. Um, they did bring a guy named Rick who played Ric Flair. Uh, his voice kind of took me out of it. I started laughing a bit. It just didn't fit Ric Flair. Um, a lot of people were talking about how MJF was in this movie. He was. He played the fake Von Erich named Lance. In real life, that was the beginning of the end of the Von Erichs because the Von Erichs, you knew they were all brothers. They're all blood brothers. They, it wasn't this fake um, wrestling brother stuff. They were actual brothers. So when they brought in Lance Von Erich, the audience was like, why are you lying to us? We don't, why are you trying to, why are you trying to lie to us? We don't appreciate you lying to us. And that was the beginning of the end of world, um, world, re dang it, what, what I, I, the name again, I, I, keep, I, I keep messing up the name. I keep messing up the name, gosh darn it. Um, my bad, Fritzy. Um, world class championship wrestling, WCCW. Well, they're, because they were very compact in the regions. And you knew, you knew stuff. So you kind of had to like, the wrestlers couldn't really lie because they had to live the gimmick because the regions were so small. So you knew everybody. So when Lance came in, everyone was like, that's not a real Von Eric. You're lying to us. That's not okay. And all the fans left. And WCCW had to be sold um, to save, save them from going bankruptcy and losing their, and losing their, uh, Losing their house and home and all that stuff. At the end of the day, go watch this movie. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Roger Ebert, Gene Sisko on you. It's a thumbs up. Go watch this movie. It's gonna pull your heart out of your body. But sometimes you need to be reminded of what you have in life. Because what if you lose? Five of your siblings in a span of nine years. Did you tell them you love them? Do they know you love them? Do they know you care about them? Do they know that you will do anything for them? And that's what this movie did for me. I made sure to tell them that I love them and I care about them. Because at the end of the day, there's nothing I would do for family. There's nothing I wouldn't do for family. Thank you so much, everyone.
for being here for this review. I didn't know I was going to go this long. I'm going to be real with you. This movie really brought about a lot of emotions, man, because I, I love my brothers. And they're, um, I am a. It's this movie really got me. So have a wonderful day. Evening, morning, night, afternoon, whenever you're watching this. Tell your siblings you love them. And tell them you care about them. So everyone, stay safe, be cool, and we'll see you guys next time. Peace.